Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox. Today, we are talking about how to make your house look expensive. But before we talk about that, I'm so excited because I just finished a makeover that I've been working on for about a week now. I asked you guys over on my Instagram what you thought the last space I was working on in my apartment was, and it was my bathroom. And you guys, it turned out incredible. I am so excited to share the video with you, but that's gonna be coming out on the channel next week. But today we are focusing on 10 inexpensive hacks, tips, and tricks to basically make your home look more expensive. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe to Lone Fox. I post brand new videos every single week and I'm just excited to be sitting down chatting with you guys today. So grab a cup of coffee or a snack and let's go ahead and jump on into these tips. I'm gonna start off by talking about a sense, which all of us have, but I definitely think this attributes to the overall feeling of an expensive space. And that is your sense of smell, which kind of sounds strange. Like, what are you talking about, Drew? What do you mean by smell? Well, when you walk into somebody's apartment, the first thing or their home, whatever it might be, the first thing you notice is of course the first viewpoint. So whether that's the entryway, a staircase, a bedroom, whatever it is when you walk into the space. But another thing that you notice is a sense of smell. So I think a great way to overall captivate somebody or just yourself, honestly, when you walk into a space is have a really nice smell going, whether it be a wall plug-in, a candle, a diffuser. There's a ton of options to make sure that your home is always smelling nice. Some of you guys are like, wait, Drew, we want decorating tips. And do not worry, I got you covered. They're coming up next. But this one is one I feel like a lot of people might not even think about. It's something you don't even like really think about when it comes to decorating a space, a sense of smell, but it's totally a factor that can benefit to the overall vibe. And if you have a nice smelling space, it's just gonna make your house feel nicer and just well thought out and more expensive. Moving into some more viewable changes that we can make. The first one is actually blank walls. Now, I know blank space is great when it comes to design, but I also think sometimes people leave all their walls blank. And I think that that's something that can cheapen up the look of your home, adding wall art and just anything to the walls, whether it be peel and stick wallpaper, paint, wall art, wall hanging, such as macrame decor, anything like that is a great way to first of all, draw the eye up. So when you walk into a room, it's kind of at eye level. You see it on the wall. When there's nothing on the walls, it can kind of make your room look short and shrunken. Everything's on the floor. It's really great to draw the eye upward with wall decor, wall art, paint, whatever it might be. So having a lot of blank walls can overall cheapen the look of your home. And I also want to preface that if you have a lot of blank walls in your home and you like that, that is totally fine. These are just little tiny tips and tricks and things that I've picked up when it comes to design. I personally don't really like having any blank walls. I love using up all of my space, maximizing it. If you have a huge blank wall in your living room that you have no idea what to do with, it is a great opportunity to add a gallery wall, which is perfect to add some artwork, some color, texture, and visual interest. You can go in with a little bit of paint. You could paint that wall for a more focal pop, or you can also go in with some large scale art pieces to fill in the wall. These are all super affordable options. You know, a can of paint doesn't cost too much. Creating a gallery wall doesn't have to cost a lot. There's DIY alternatives, and I've shared a ton of different ways to do it on my channel in the past. A little tip when it comes to styling is all about layering up. So as you guys can see on my sofa right here, for example, I have a really great throw blanket. It's like a chunky knit throw blanket, and I have a couple of cute throw pillows on here as well, and that's a layered look on the couch, which overall makes it look more luxe, makes it look more plush and comfortable, and it also, again, just adds interest in texture. We have some really great texture with the throw blanket, but we also have texture in terms of patterns. So we have this kind of tonal pattern here, a gridded pattern pattern here. And the same thing goes for beds as well. When you walk into a high-end furniture store or you see a space that you really love, a lot of times the bed is made up of layers. So there's like that sheet layer, there might be a quilt, there might be a duvet, there might even be a comforter, multiple sets of sleeping pillows, multiple throw pillows, a throw blanket. The list honestly goes on you guys, but layering up, it doesn't have to cost a lot, but it really does make an impact. A lot of times when I pull up info images that I love of a living room or a bedroom, there's always, always layered textiles and it just makes the space look so much more expensive in the end um, and it's definitely something to consider you know you don't have to go crazy with the layers but adding one or two is a nice way to add some more dimension and texture to your space I'm sure by the end of this video I'm gonna be saying dimension texture visual interest color pattern and every other adjective to describe these things a thousand times. So I apologize right now for that. On to our fourth tip, which is a really impactful one and one that I've talked about multiple times on my channel before. That is replacing old, dingy, crusted, dusted, and busted light fixtures. So if your light fixture isn't cute, you guys, go head out to Ikea, shop online for an affordable light fixture to replace that one. And you guys, light fixtures are not hard to install. Totally something you can do at home by watching a YouTube video as well. But it's a great way to go ahead and just remove something that normally is always 
always renter grade or just the most affordable option that the person that you know is selling you the home purchase and add something a little bit more personalized. You can even DIY a light. I have created like 15 or 20 different pendant light DIYs across my channel in the past, but swapping out unattractive light fixtures or just unappealing light fixtures is a great way to make your home look more expensive. First of all, it doesn't look renter grade. It doesn't look basic. And while you're changing out your light fixtures, you might as well also ensure that you have a correct light bulb in them. So I personally really like daylight bulbs or like a soft warm light depending on the space, but sometimes lighting can really lean super, super warm or super, super cold. Also totally changes the colors of a space. If you have a white sofa, it could start looking blue with cool tone lights, or it could start looking orange with more warm tone lights. So you can really, really change the way a space looks and give accurate color depiction based off of the lighting in the space as well. So keep those two things in mind, swap out crusted, dusted lighting and swap out crusted, dusted and swap out busted, dusted light bulbs. Yes, both of those. This next one's kind of random, but I wanted to throw it in still just as a thought, something to keep in mind. But basically I remember when I used to have my old apartments or my old bedrooms through my apartments, I'd always just have one nightstand by my bed on the side I would sleep on because no one else was sleeping in the bed. didn't need anything for anyone else. Still don't need anything for anyone else, but two nightstands, I think, really, really elevates a bedroom. If you have space for two nightstands on either side, even if no one's on that other side, it's gonna make such an impactful change to your bedroom. Like just kind of visualize to yourself right now, if you walked into a bedroom that you love, you saw it on Pinterest and there was only one nightstand in that room, you'd be like, where's the other one? You know, I feel like it just really completes the space, but I just like the way that it looks. I think it looks really nice. It balances it out. It kind of gives it symmetry and just overall, it just makes it look really balanced in the end. So consider that. And I'm not telling you guys to go out and purchase matching furniture sets because that's a big no-no too. We don't want matching furniture sets in 2021. I'm sorry. There's no more of those. Next up, let's add a breath of fresh air to your space. That's going to be done through plants or flowers and they can totally be artificial if you want to. I think real plants add a little bit more of a better vibe, if you will, but I have a mixture of both throughout my apartment. I have faux plants and I have real plants. You know, this tree back here. <laughs> um, that's a faux olive tree and I love it so much. I would never be able to keep an olive tree alive in here, but I do have a couple of real plants throughout my apartment. And I also think plants are a great way to add color to a space without adding color to a space because a plant is a neutral. I'm sorry what you guys say, but plants truly are neutral. If you have a full on neutral space, like I have right now, there's lots of neutral tones in here. The green really just blends right in. That is a neutral. I'm sorry. A plant is a neutral. Now, if you're a DIYer like myself, listen up to a couple of these next tips, which I'm sure a lot of you guys already know these, but this is something to keep in mind if you're wanting to transform your space and just make it look a little bit more expensive. Some of the first easy changes are brand new hardware. So if you want to swap out hardware on a dresser, swap out hardware on a vanity, a cabinet, even in your kitchen cabinets, wherever it is, swapping out hardware can make such a humongous impact at a really reasonable and expensive price point as well. You can also add new legs to really anything as well. If you go on Amazon, you can search like a ton of different leg options. You can get hairpin legs, acrylic legs, if you want to switch up the way your coffee table looks, that's another vibe as well. These are all do-it-yourself ideas that you can do to pieces you already have. So you don't have to go break the bank buying something new. Um, a couple other ideas are, you know, the leather paint chair I just recently did. I shared with you guys how I took an old kind of not so cute accent chair and I made a concoction of leather paint that I painted on there. And in the end, it ended up looking like a vintage distressed leather accent chair, which I just love. I think that was such a cool technique. I've also done ceramic paint in the past on my channel where you mix baking soda with your acrylic paint and you can paint it on whatever you want and it just gives it an overall ceramic kind of porcelain look. Consider using a lot of your DIY skills to recreate or update or upcycle pieces you already have. This next one is so reasonably priced but really gives you such a luxe expensive result on the end and that is any form of wall molding. Now on my channel in the past you guys have seen me do board and batten in my bedroom. I did it in my roommate's bathroom. I might have even done it in my own bathroom which is coming out shortly but there's tons of different ways to add wall molding to walls. You know, you can do beadboard, you can do wainscoting, you can do diagonal wall molding, you can do full on vertical wall molding, you can do board and batten. There is a ton of ideas and you guys, wall molding doesn't have to cost a lot at all. Go out and buy a couple of boards, literally nail them to your wall, cut them to size, paint over them and you are good to go. And I personally think that wall molding is one of the most inexpensive things you could do that gives you one of the most expensive results in the end because it really looks like, you know, the architect that built your 
home or the person that you bought your home from put so much work and effort into what they designed in the space. And you know, it probably cost you a fortune in the end, but in reality, you did it yourself for like a hundred bucks. So I love wall molding. Definitely consider it, you guys, if you have a blank or boring space. Like imagine a wall without a baseboard, you guys. Like that would just be so bland and boring. So wall molding is kind of like step up from a baseboard. You're just adding more baseboards on your wall to make it look even prettier. So uh, I just love them. I've done them multiple times and they're super easy coming from me, you guys. I swear you can do it too. It's very, very simple. We gotta talk about window treatments because you guys, window treatments, this is the craziest before and after that I'm gonna be sharing with you. I've shared it in another video in the past and I think in my actual bedroom makeover as well. But this is how impactful the curtains that I added to my bedroom changed the space. When I toured this apartment to go through and rent it, I was like, you know, this is not very cute. There was sheer curtains that literally only fit the window with the tiniest, thinnest little metal curtain rod above it. And I was just like, what are these? You couldn't even see the beautiful windows behind because they're actually really pretty trimmed out windows that pull out. And I love them so much, but these kind of sheer ugly curtains were blocking them. So in my bedroom, for example, I mounted the curtain rod almost all the way to the ceiling. Before, as you guys were able to see, it was just mounted right above the window, which is not what you wanna do. Even if your window is in the middle of the wall, mounting your curtains as high as you can when they're closed makes it appear that the window is taller, but when you have it opened, it also just makes the wall appear much higher as well. And it's not going to like be awkward or anything like that with all this extra, you know, fabric above your window. It just really adds a nice bit of texture to the space as well with that fabric. And on top of that, they serve a really great purpose. So I do think investing in your window treatments can sometimes not be super inexpensive, but it is something in the end that you're gonna have for a long period of time. It's functional. You know, you need proper window treatments to sleep great at night, things like that just to keep in mind. So I think if you were to splurge on something in this video, it would be proper curtains or proper blinds, whatever you wanna add to your space. But I just wanted to share with you guys how impactful a small change like curtains can make to a space. And I thought I had one more tip for you guys, but that was actually everything. So those were all 10 of my inexpensive hacks to just overall make your home appear more expensive. And I do want to also preface that a lot of these are personal opinions. So if you don't believe in one of these or you don't follow one of these and you think your home looks great as is, that is totally fine. However you like your home, that is how it should be. But I wanted to give these to anybody that maybe was struggling or, you know, just moved into a space or just wants to amp up the look of their space a little bit more. So if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. And I'd love to see you back here on my channel next week for a new video and you guys also need to make sure to subscribe because the bathroom makeover is coming out next week and I don't want you to miss that one. I would feel sad if you missed that one to be quite honest. Like it is so good. I'm so excited but I'll catch you guys in my next one. Follow me over on TikTok and Instagram too if you'd like. I've been posting over there quite a bit and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.